Hello again. What we're looking at here is a magnified view of the single particle trap and there's not much to see right now because there are no particles in the trap so let's turn up the voltage and we'll drop uh, some particles in using the wand and there we have several particles and what, what you're looking at here is what you'd see on the TV monitor okay there's a built-in uh, microscope on the single particle trap and uh, that gives you a pretty nice view, a magnified view of the center and as you can see now, there are several particles in the trap. Each one appears as a streak. Okay. And this being a single particle trap, we would like to eliminate some of those particles and just look at one. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the voltage on the trap down. And some of them, you see, the trap gets weaker and some of the particles will go away. And we'll be left, hopefully, with one. We keep just turn it down and back up again until one of them is left. There we go, one particle left. The others have fallen out, and so it's a single particle. Okay, and as you can see, it goes nicely to the center, and that's because we have gravity balanced with a DC electric field. Okay, so the AC forces are pushing the particle to the center of the trap, and the DC voltages, uh, voltage is uh, balancing gravity. If I turn the DC voltage off, then you see the particle is pulled down uh, by gravity, and it's pulled away from the trap center. And down at that position, the electric field, the oscillate, the AC electric field is non-zero, so it gets a micro-motion. If I turn the DC back up again, then I can set it at a point where I balance gravity. I can go beyond that as well. Now the DC fields are overcompensating for gravity, so the particle is pulled up. And if I go and do it just right, then I will compensate for gravity and have a particle nicely centered. So now the DC field... Uh, the forces from the DC field balance gravity, uh, and so the particle is pushed to the center of the trap where there's no micro-motion. Okay, so now I can use that to measure the charge to mass ratio. Because right here, the force of gravity, mg, is being balanced by the uh, DC electric forces, qe. And I know e because there's a, the, I know the voltage applied to two plates, and I know the separation of those plates in the trap. Okay, and so I can calculate the electric field, and then mg is equal to qe, and I do the math, and I get the charge to mass ratio of that particle. So you saw how long that took. It's very, very fast. Uh, you just measure the voltage, do the calculation, you put a particle in, reduce it down to one, and then uh, balance gravity, and then you get q over e. So you can do this uh, multiple times with multiple particles if you want. Okay, so now we would like also to uh, measure the, the mass of the particle so we can get uh, the charge uh, by itself. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to make a, a better image of the trap so we can measure the particle diameter. So right now the laser is shining on it and the laser is very, very bright so it just looks like a bright spot. We can get a better picture if we turn the laser off and turn an LED on. And so now you see there's the image is backlit, the particle is backlit with an LED. And so the particle is just sitting there, and we get a nice image of the particle. Again, if I change the DC fields, I can move it up and down. And you see that it uh, gets blurry because there, there's micromotion up here. And there's micromotion down there, and so that gets blurred out. But if I get rid of the micromotion, then I just have a particle sitting nicely in the center of the trap. And if you look carefully, which you probably can't do because the video you're looking at doesn't have a high enough resolution, but this is an HD camera and an HD monitor, and I can see a pretty nice uh, view of that particle, and it's not quite spherical. It has a characteristic uh, uh, corner on a sphere shape, these lycopodium particles, and you see that on the image. But they're roughly spherical, and one can measure the diameter of the particle uh, just with a plastic ruler holding it up to the TV monitor. You can measure that and calibrate the image and therefore get the diameter to about 10%, 20%. And so you measure the volume of that particle to maybe a factor of 2. And we know the density, and so therefore we measure the mass to a factor of 2. Uh, and from that we can uh, use the charge to mass ratio and then get the charge out. And, uh, and you'll find it's around 10 to the fifth electrons, uh, typically. Okay. And so, uh, so there you have it. You measure the charge to mass ratio then measure the diameter, uh, we know the density, and from that we can pull out the charge and mass independently. Uh, what's kind of fun about this experiment, it's quantitative, uh, you can get real numbers, and when you go into it, 
What I like about it is you go into it, you have no idea what the charge on that particle is. I mean, none whatsoever. Uh, you just, just don't know because uh, you don't even know how to guess. And so here you started out with no idea how much charge there was, and now you, you know it to a factor of two, that's something. Uh, and again, one can do multiple particles and get statistics and just play around with it. Uh, there's more we can do. Uh, let's look again using the laser. Okay, here we go. If I turn the voltage up, okay, well, here's one thing I can do that's kind of fun. So I will balance this. I turn the trap down a little bit. So I'm looking at the DC again, and I will make sure it's nicely balanced. Now I'll just turn the trap off. Boom. Trap is off. There's no AC voltage anymore. And yet the, the particle just slowly, slowly drifts. And that's because there's just no force on it. Now I turn the AC back up to pull it in. But the DC voltage nicely balances gravity. So there's no gravity anymore. It's in a weightless environment. And the air currents are blocked because this trap is pretty well sealed up. There are a few holes for getting light in and particles in, but other than that, it's pretty sealed up. So unless I blow into it, there aren't too many air currents. And so, uh, so everything's pretty well uh, balanced. And so all I do is I turn the trap off right now, turning the trap off. The AC field is off, and the particle just slowly, slowly drifts out of the field of view uh, until I turn the trap back on again. So. So that's kind of fun, just you see that once you balance gravity, there's not too much uh, else going on inside there. No other particles pushing around, and the stray fields are pretty small as well. So there's another thing I can do with this particle in, in the trap. It's sitting there stably, and if I turn the voltage up too high, it goes into one of these crazy unstable orbits. Okay, so I turn it back down, it's stable and nicely centered. I turn it up and it goes into an extended orbit. Now what's going on there, we can look at this by strobing the laser. So I'm going to strobe the laser now. And there it goes. Okay, well, there's some little bit of artifacts from the strobing. But you see it going up and down and it pauses a little as it crosses the center line when the fields go to zero. And if you want to understand that, well, it's a little subtle, but uh, we have a little uh, discussion of this in the physics of the ion trapping document, and you can try to figure out what's going on. So what we're doing now is we're storming the laser, so we're just seeing the motion of that particle. Now there's that bar going across the screen. That's an artifact of the, of the camera running near 60 hertz. Uh, but um, but if you ignore that bar, then the particle is just going up and down in one of these extended orbits. And by strobing the laser, we're just seeing it in slow motion. So we stop the strobe, and there's the whole, uh, the whole thing in the, in the streak. And then we turn it on again, and we can see the motion. So one can really take data on this if you like. You turn it down, and it becomes stable again. And you turn it up, and it goes into an unstable not, a, not quite unstable, but in an extended orbit. So, uh, so it's just a phenomenon one can observe. Okay. So the main thing we like to do in this experiment is measure the charge to mass ratio of the particle and then extract the mass and, and really just characterize the, the particles. But just as an added benefit, we can then turn it up and look at this strange phenomenon of the extended orbits. Uh, at least at a qualitative level, we can uh, we can have a little look and a little discussion of what's going on there as well. Okay, so there you have it, the single particle trap. Uh, one can do other things. You can measure, for example, the, the the length of that streak as a function of the DC voltage applied, and from that one can uh, calculate the damping of the particle, and the damping is Stokes damping, and from that uh, you can extract the radius of the particle. And so uh, uh, that's another thing you can calculate. That's a little more advanced, uh, but it's another way of getting at the radius of the particle in a dynamical way by looking at the damping from Stokes damping. Okay? So, uh, so there's a lot you can do. The simple part is just measuring the charge to mass ratio and then the mass, and then it gets uh, a little more advanced into looking at other uh, aspects of the trap and of the particles. And so that's the single particle trap. We're just trying to uh, make some quantitative measurements of the particles and the trap dynamics. Okay, that's all for that. Thanks for listening.